Microsoft includes AI agents in the next Power Automate desktop version. When you open up Power Automate desktop, you will see this Copilot. And that is because everything is backed with Copilot, where we have the GPT-4 OS engine. So a really powerful engine. And let's get started. The first thing we'll see here is to describe with Copilot. Here you can use your natural everyday English words to describe a flow. That could be open the Excel book on the desktop called employees, read the data and for each row display name in a message box. Finally, close Excel. So we just describe what we want and it actually understands if we misspelled something. So for example, let us just say that we've got an X here and in the message box, let's do this. So a few spelling mistakes, I'll send my prompt and then the right sidebar, the co-pilot sidebar here in Power Automate Desktop starts working. It takes our words, then it uses GPT-40, the Omni model, which is the most capable model from OpenAI, where Microsoft own 49%. Then it translates these words into a working flow. So in a very few seconds, we will see a flow designer opens with the suggested actions. Here we go, we can see we load a desktop flow. And this is so impressive. Here we start. The first action is a start of AI generated actions. And you can see that it puts each part of these actions into regions, which is something I recommend. That is to order our flow better. So really cool and it gives them a cool description. Also here in the end, it says end of AI generated actions. These two are just common, which you can delete if you want. So all these regions, let me expand these. Let's see what's going on and then we can try to run the flow. So it gets the special folder and that is the desktop folder on this computer. So this will also work if we copy the flow to your instance or another instance. That's because I just told Copilot that it should open up an Excel book on my desktop. So it starts by retrieving the desktop folder path which it uses here in Launch Excel. It also says that the Excel book is called employees.xlsx. So here we can see it combines a variable with the name employees and it adds the xlsx because I told him it was an Excel book. It stores that in an Excel instance. Then it reads the data into a data table called Excel data. Down here, it pre processes the data in a for each, which is correct and it displays the name in the Q and row. And then it also closes the Excel down here. So mission accomplished, we will test it. But this is so cool. Just for me as a developer, I can develop these flows much faster, but also for business users who can now build these flows without me helping them. Let us click run here. And we will see if everything works. So we are launching Excel. Here we have it. And we can see it populates the Gerald Parker here. The next one that is Jason Clark, Dana Thomas, and so forth. Let us just stop the automation here. We are not taking each one of these 100 items. From here, I can again use my own words to get help. That is, if I open up the co-pilot sidebar up here in the right corner, I can add steps or understand something about the flow. This is straightforward and it really lets every people in a company automate because now we don't need any developer experience. Let's save the flow and close it down. We can see up here it's called Untitled. That's because we created it with Copilot. You can, of course, rename it here in My Flows. That is just to go to Settings and rename it up here. Let's move on. 
Now we will turn on the AI recorder. That is this record with Copilot. What this does is that it takes, we record our keyboard and mouse movements. It records what we open up, what we type in, everything. And I can even talk to it through my microphone. So it combines my voice with what I do, which is so impressive. Let's get started. So what I do here is to press this AI recorder button. And again, Copilot uses DPT 4.0 Omni to analyze everything. Here we can get some tips or watch a demo. We don't need that. So I'll just click next. Then I choose my screen. I pick my second screen here, choose my microphone, because now we will also input our voice into this recording. I'll click record. I muted the microphone up here. So what I say to you now doesn't come in this automation. In two seconds, I will enable it. And then I will open up a web page where we will do a web extraction. Let's end it. Let's go. Here, I want to extract each item on this page. I muted the microphone again. I could add more steps that I could click in and do typings, everything I want to automate. I just show or tell. Once I'm done, I click this done icon up here. And then the recording has ended and Copilot starts analyzing what it saw. Here, it will combine my mouse movement, my keyboard input, application actions, and my audio. And it will take a few minutes, and then it will have a script ready. So let's fast forward. Here we go. We have the start of AI generated action comment up here and an end of AI generated actions down here, which is great because then we can separate AI generated actions very uh, precisely. And we can see what's generated by AI and what's generated by you or me. Of course, you can impress your boss and delete those and say you build this yourself. That's also a possibility. The first region here, we indeed will launch a blank document. We open up a browser and navigate to anasjensen.org. That's what we did in the actual recording. We click on a link, then we extract some data. And if I click down here, we can see that we write back to an Excel worksheet. This loop here is probably not what we would use if we were developers. I think I would prefer and just to write the data table back to Excel. But this is this definitely works, I think, with the loop. It's a quite advanced because it takes a row count here and then it adds one to them and add it to the Excel. We will test it in a few seconds. We also have the copilot over here with a recap of the flow and we can add further steps to it. Let me try to run it. And if the web page starts on the other screen, I will just drag this one in. Here it is. Now it will click courses and it should extract the data. There you go. You can see that we are extracting the data to the Excel sheet which is nice and that's exactly what we wanted to do. So if I go over here, we have the data extractors. That is all anasjensen.org courses. Then we can go back to our flow and we have a nice AI generated flow again. Here we can choose to save and let me close this Excel. We will not use that further. Let me show you more nice new AI features here in Power Automate Desktop. We close this flow and we go to My Flows. Now we have an Untitled and an Untitled 2. Let's pick the last flow that was this Untitled 2 and go to Properties. I can choose to rename it. Here I can call it Extract Courses Manasjensen.org. And a nice new feature that is let Copilot create a description. If we hit that, it will look at our actions and then it will suggest a description. This is a nice way because then we can 
if we forgot what's happening, we could use this button, but it's also nice to add a little description to other users. Probably not the biggest features, but uh, in this update, but it's still a nice feature and this will probably get better. So in the future, you will have process descriptions. Let's scroll a little bit down. And by the way, the run picture in picture is also a nice feature that is not um, an AI feature though. Here we have the repair flow errors. Enable that. And now we will have self healing selectors. Yes, if we find a broken element, we can repair it with Copilot by enabling this feature. Let's try to build a flow and then enable this one here so we can see it actually works. Let me just click save here and we will wait two seconds while it saves. Let's build a new flow. We will call this one employee onboarding and I'll click create. And let me maximize it. So now we will build it. We will test that we can have self healing selectors. The first um, action I want, that will be a launch new Microsoft Edge like this. Here I want to let me show you. I prepared a sample today that is called employee onboarding. Here I want to fill in like name, employee ID, email address, job title and department. These ones are not that important. What's important here is that I can click submit onboarding. This works perfect if nothing happens. But imagine a fragile UI where uh, either a developer picks up a new button or this UI changes from time to time. Then it will be hard to automate because you cannot create a rule for which button to click. That is, you cannot create an address. This will require maintenance, which is expensive. And it could look like this. This is just an, a demo button. Once I click here, you can see this element changes and now the automation will crash. But now with AI, our automation can heal itself. Let's try to get started. And we go back to Power Automate Desktop. Because here I want to not launch a new instance. I will just attach it to the running instance. That is the browser I just showed you. So I click this drop down and we take the onboard employee and click save like this. Then we want to let's go back here. I want to um, have this one as default. So I want to click here. Another new AI feature that is this AI suggestion. You can see this plus here. If I click here, AI suggests actions that we might want to take. This could be clicking on web page. So I just double click here and it inserts the suggested action. Then we will create a new UI element. A UI element is everything you can click or interact with on a screen. It can be in applications or browsers. Today it's browsers, but it could easily be an application as well. I'll pick this submit onboarding. So I'll press control on my keyboard and pick the button here. And then I will click save. Our new flow is ready if I click run here, you will see that it will click the submit onboarding. Nothing will happen, but it will run successfully. You can see it down here with a little nice check mark. But what happened if I instead go to my web page, change the button. Now the button is missing, but it's clearly this button that we want to click. But what's happening now is that we are launching the flow. Power Automate Desktop will look for the button and after a few seconds, it will fail. Probably already is. Here you go. You can now see that the element with the selector cannot be found. Let's go fix it. We will save the flow first and then we will close it like this. Then we will also, um, let me go here to the flow overview. We will also click the properties and again, could choose to describe your flow with Copilot, but what we want to look at is the repair flow errors. We will choose to repair with Copilot. You can also enable that you will manually repair a UI element if a flow fails, that is, it will pop up. But we like AI and we like to reduce manual work. That's it. We have now saved the flow. Now we can test it. We will run it from Power Automate Cloud here. So we will build a new flow. 
Let's go hit create. And this is just the way to trigger our flow that is up in the Power Automate cloud. And again, I will just call this one employee onboard trigger. We will choose to manually trigger our flow and then we will click create. Here we have our flow build. And by the way, we also have the co-pilot in Power Automate cloud. Here I click plus, add an action, and I'll choose to run a flow built with Power Automate desktop. Let me just drag it over here so we can see what's going on. We will trigger the flow and then we will see that it cannot find this button because again, let me just go here. And that will be this register button. I will just let me just drag it out here. So we have this uh, browser tab completely separated. Here I will choose to uh, find a desktop flow that will be employee onboarding. I'll choose attended. That's all I can afford. And then we can click save and we can try to run the flow. And now the magic happens. Let me just save it here. And if you like all this, please give this video a thumbs up. That will really help my channel uh, and me a lot. Thank you. And I can click test manually test the flow. We should be signed in for this. And yes, then we can click continue. Now we are running the flow. The flow will discover that it cannot click this button. It will try to attach to the web page. It can do that, but it cannot click this button. Then what happens then is that we are suggest we are giving a suggestion if it can heal itself with the AI. Let's see what's going on here. Um, now it's running, running, running. It uh, when we triggered from the Power Automate cloud, it will take a little bit. Now you can see it. it registered the page, but it cannot find that little button here. And that's because it's another button. So in a little while, we will see that um, this repair here, it's uh, now say this UI element cannot be found. That is the submit onboarding, then it's tried to repair the element. And this is so cool. It found that it must be this button because it has register on. And if I'm happy with that, I can choose to preview the selector. That is this new new selector that has been made. If I click this drop down, I can choose to apply it for every run, apply it once or repair it manually. Well, I will apply it for every run. It will add a new selector for this element. It will be a fallback selector in Power Automate Desktop in the flow. Let me show you what that means. Now you can see it clicked. But if I go back to Power Automate Desktop, open up this flow and then take a look at the UI element. Let us just have the flow load. Come on, come on, come on. Then we should see a really cool thing. If I go to UI elements and double click the button, you can now see we have the default selector. We created that together, but we also have a self healed generate selector. I can choose to rename this if I wanted. I can also choose to let's say that I want to m use this as a default and I can even delete the initial one. Now it will only look for this. Another cool AI feature. Let me just click save here. That will be the create text with GPT. I created a full video demo of just that action. That is because it's so cool. You can find it right here. Thanks for watching.